Uh-oh, we have a new cartridge. You know what that means. It's time for epic content. Make sure you go grab your social regressive yakety snacks, throw a beanbag chair on the floor because we're gonna get crazy with this. We have charts, we have data, we have all kinds of things that I've worked up here in the background and we're gonna see if we can get down to the bottom of what Hornady six millimeter arc is all about. Now, first off, we need to jump into the framework here. The framework, as we talked about with 350 Legend, is the AR-15 platform. Ever since back in the 1960s, when the, uh, the AR-15 slash M16 came out, uh, there's been a, a lot of complaints from folks about two things. First off, uh, the rifle itself was jamming early on, and so you had a lot of people that just turned them off to it. Turned out it was the military's fault. They were doing some uh, silly things with powders and with cleaning regimen. So once they got that squared away, they got the rifle fixed. But the other big thing that people were complaining about is they considered the round to be weak. And really, it is a varmint cartridge. This is one that actually is the smallest varmint cartridge that I use when I'm out hunting prairie dogs. I use 223 with some 55 grain hollow points. And it's great for that, but there are a lot of folks that, especially with those little uh, 55 grain FMJ bullets, they considered it not to be particularly effective. And so gradually, and especially really ramping up in the last couple of decades, there has been a major push to fix that problem. We're using more effective bullets now, both in the military and more so on the civilian side. We have all kinds of crazy loads that we can buy off the shelf or that we can hand load for 223 slash 556 by 45. Uh, we can make those much more effective for all kinds of different uses, both at close distance and at some of the longer distances. But a lot of people were not, uh, you know, completely satisfied with that. So they went the route of creating a whole bunch of great new cartridges that can do very extreme things with this platform, uh, depending on what kind of distances that you're after. So we, we're gonna take a look at a bunch of those here today, but we have some that really favor a great, a great big load of power at kind of closer distances. And then we have some that can really stretch the capabilities at distance uh, with this same platform. And one of the big ones that we're gonna be kind of comparing all this to is 6.5 Grendel. Uh, 6.5 Grendel uses a 220 Russian case. So it's one that is a little bit on the small side. It's not a, you know, a gigantic powder charge. It's gonna be a bit more than 223. So we're gonna be able to get some pretty decent velocities out of a 6.5 millimeter bullet. So we're, you know, we're getting more mass with the bullet. We're getting a bit more speed and we're actually not losing much in terms of capacity. You can get magazines for 6.5 Grendel uh, that can kind of maintain not quite you know, a 30 rounder, but uh, I've seen you know, 25, 26, somewhere in there. So we can certainly get a pretty decent round count in an AR-15, even with something that provides a good bit more of a hit. You can think of Hornady's new six millimeter arc as a neck down 6.5 Grendel. There are a couple slight differences, but for the most part, it really is the same thing. And if you have 6.5 Grendel cases, it's probably gonna be easy to convert it to six millimeter arc. But since we have something like 6.5 Grendel, why do we need six millimeter arc? And there are actually some key differences that we're gonna take a look at here today that might be pretty interesting to you guys. The biggest reason why I, in particular, am very interested in six millimeter arc is because of the projectiles. 6.5 millimeter projectiles are very efficient for their diameter. Uh, you're gonna have some very high ballistic coefficients and that's how we're able to stay supersonic with 6.5 Grendel out past a thousand yards. People are getting maybe, you know, 1200 yards somewhere in there. It kind of depends on their setup. But with an AR, with a, you know, maybe a longer barrel, and even with a short one, you can get very good distance out of them because they are so ballistically efficient. Six millimeter is definitely in that range. People have known for a long time that you can get a very efficient bullet in 243 Winchester, as you see right here. This is a 105 grain boat tail hollow point from Hornady. Uh, this is one of my favorite bullets of all time. I, I love this thing. I'm loading some up for 243 right now uh, that we're going to be testing in the telekinesis rifle. Make sure you don't miss that. So like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell uh, so you can see when those videos come out. But you have actually an extremely wide array of bullets, much more than 6.5 has or possibly could ever have. We're going to see. 6.5, of course, has really caught the, uh, the market by storm. And we're probably gonna see all kinds of interesting military loads for it, uh, some interesting bullets that can do some very interesting things. 
but for now at least, and probably into the future as well, uh, six millimeter can just do some things that 6.5 can't. This right here is an 87 grain, but we can actually step these even further back. So at the top end, you have things like a 115 grain bullet, a DTAC, uh, it's from, yeah, a DTAC. So those can be very, very efficient through the air. They're extremely long, they look kind of like needles. Uh, but you get some of the bigger burgers. And then Hornady has some like 108 grain, which is how they're gonna start out with six millimeter arc is with a 108 grain load. And then down to, I think a 105 and a 103. So yeah, pretty big bullets for that. But then you can step things down in size drastically. You can actually get down below half the weight of your largest bullets. And you're probably going to have very good precision and you're gonna be able to get very different effects. So yeah, this is that 87 right here, but we can actually scale these back to a 75 grain bullet. We can get down to a 58, a 60, and even down to a 55 grain bullet that is just gonna be screaming out of this cartridge and is going to be very good for varminting, I think. Uh, I really enjoy shooting an AR-15 out uh, for prairie dogs. And if you're a coyote hunter, you're probably gonna like this as well. Uh, you can just get some very, very fast loads that don't really drop much or have much wind drift at some of the, uh, the closer distances. And uh, that's, that's gonna be one of the really fun things about six millimeter arc. One other big thing to think about related to these bullets is going to be seating depth. There's kind of a limit that you get with 6.5 Grendel, especially if you're dealing with the magazine limitations of the AR-15. Now naturally there will be bolt action rifles that are chambered for uh, 6.5 Grendel and for six millimeter arc. So maybe you can open things up and you can get some longer overall lengths on your loads. But uh, when you're dealing with 6.5, you're gonna have some very, very efficient bullets that also get very, very long, and you, some of these you can't really load up. Like, I haven't quite seen yet anybody load up a 147 grain uh, ELDM bullet, uh, the kind that I use in my um, my 6.5 Creedmoor, the, the big old uh, one mile build rifle series. I'll put a link to that here. Um, but yeah, you, you probably can't load those up in this magazine. It's just gonna push way too far back into the case. You're gonna lose your speed, and actually you might have a gap in the uh, the neck. It's, it's just probably not gonna seat very well. There are certain bullets like that that are just not going to work. Six millimeter arc is gonna be a little bit different because you do have bullets that are gonna have just a little bit of a different shape. So that 108 is heading up right toward the top of what you can get for a six millimeter bullet and Hornady is loading it just straight out of the factory. So we're gonna be able to get uh, the right depth and be able to hit that 2.260 inch overall length to fit inside the magazine. I'm really excited about that. Now let's jump into some of the benefits of six millimeter arc that don't necessarily differentiate it from 6.5 Grendel. And I'm not trying to knock a 6.5 Grendel or six millimeter arc. Uh, they both are actually gonna do very similar jobs just in a slightly different way. And I think that both are gonna be really awesome. You can't go wrong with either of them. But uh, we're gonna talk specifically about how it kind of ticks things up over 223 and how six millimeter arc is gonna be a big jump up from that. Now, first off is gonna be energy. 6mm arc and 6.5 Grendel are going to improve your immediate energy in a huge way. So you're looking at nearly 1800 inch pounds of energy at the muzzle, which is kind of what you're getting into with 350 Legend at that very close distance. Now naturally, since these are more efficient bullets, it's actually going to retain that energy from much longer distances. And in the 350 Legend testing, I did point out how 6.5 Grendel is actually, for you know most of your distances, the better cartridge. It's just that uh, 350 Legend seems to work really well, especially up close. It's a really heavy hitter. One of the biggest differences between six millimeter arc and cartridges like say 458 SOCOM and 350 Legend is of course going to be recoil. And our lighter weight shooters like children, they're gonna be able to tell the difference. But then one of the other really big things that I'm excited about with this is hand loading. 243 Winchester is a fantastic hand loader's cartridge. Uh, it's one that you can get, like I said, all those kinds of bullets for, and you can get loads specific for your kind of use. And that's gonna apply to six millimeter arc as well. Loading for a semi-automatic cartridge, a bottleneck especially, is a pain in the neck. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it right up front. 
you have to do all kinds of steps to it. You have to full length size it every time. It's pretty annoying. So I want my cartridge to be very special if I'm going to be hand loading for it. This one is going to be special enough that, uh, yeah, I'm gonna be pretty happy to hand load for this. And it's gonna be kind of lower volume shooting than you're typically gonna get with 223, uh, largely because you're probably gonna have a better impact with that first shot. You might not need the follow-up. Uh, the, the good old 45 ACP argument, I think is gonna hold out pretty well right here. What about magazines? We have plenty of 6.5 Grendel magazines out there, so the industry is ready to catch us right out of the gate. This is some of the issue that we have with other rounds that have been developed uh, for the AR-15 platform. It may take a while for the industry to catch up and be able to give us some parts, but no, we have magazines in 25 or 26 round capacity just waiting for us. That is a really big benefit. And as far as that industry support goes, uh, there is quite a list of manufacturers that have already signed on with Hornady to be able to produce uh, specific parts. Like, you know, they're gonna be producing barrels, they're gonna be making magazines. Uh, we're, hopefully we're gonna be getting some uh, brass and reloading components sometime soon. At the very least, we know we have bullets and powder. But uh, the same company here, Hornady, that brought us 6.5 Creedmoor, which has been such a huge success, 6mm Creedmoor, 6.5 PRC, 300 PRC, Hornady has been taking care of business, and I think that we can rely on them to help make this launch very successful, along with the other companies that I've listed right here. Now the particular rifle that I'm going to be playing with is a CMMG. It's not this one. This is the Resolute that I've been testing in 350 Legend. I have a rifle on the way in 6mm arc so we can do all kinds of testing uh, for accuracy, for long range potential, and for terminal performance at realistic distances. This is going to be a whole lot of fun. You guys get to see what the cartridge can actually do uh, as you step back different distances. I expect to be able to hit gel with it uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to shoot for 400 yards. Everybody hits these things at about 10 or 25 yards, and I think that's silly. Let's see what it can do at 400. I think we're going to have a good old time. Now for the downsides, and there are a few. These aren't huge ones, but these are ones that you need to be thinking about. 6mm arc is going to require you to swap your barrel. So if you want to go from 223 over to 6mm arc, you're going to have to swap the barrel, you're gonna to have to swap the magazine over to the, uh, the 6.5 Grendel type, and you're gonna to have to swap that bolt head. Thankfully, uh, at least, you know, these two parts, the magazines and the, the bolt heads, are readily available. They're made by multiple manufacturers. You can, you know, pick one that works for you, and you can probably get matching sets here as people swap over. Uh, so they're gonna be able to get a matching barrel and bolt head, so they're not gonna have to mess around. But the rest of it is gonna be the same. So you have the same buffer, same buffer tube, same buffer spring, same bolt. You're probably not gonna have any issues with, you know, uh, gas uh, blocks or some of the, uh, you know, the gas tubes. It's all gonna be the same. You're just gonna swap the barrel, swap that bolt head and magazine, and then you're ready to go. Not too bad. Accessories. You are going to have some accessories you're going to have to keep an eye on. The muzzle, smartly, is going to be threaded for 5 8 24, not half 28. Uh, there are certain cartridges that have stepped up in size, but they haven't necessarily stepped up the, uh, the threading on the barrel. And if you put a 223 brake or suppressor on there, you're going to blow it up. Uh, so with this one, they've, they've done the smart thing. If you have a can that's set up for 308, you know, any kind of 30 caliber bullet, then you can just slap it on there and you're gonna be ready to go. So again, not a big deal, but if you're all set up for 223 or 224 Valkyrie, yeah, you're gonna need some stuff that's a little bit bigger. And as for the ammo cost, at this point we're unsure, but I have been able to check and see what the pre-sale prices are like. Yes, it's going to be more expensive than 223, but so far the only things that I'm seeing out there are premium ammo and the prices actually aren't that bad. Uh, the three that I'm seeing from Hornady right now, I think there's a, a 108, is the, that's the one that they're really showing off. It's an ELD M bullet. That one's going to be extremely efficient through the air. And uh, it's a very long bullet. And, you know, it's, it's going to be one that's going to cost a bit more. But right now it's costing about 22 bucks for a box. So you're looking at just a bit over a dollar a round, and that's not too shabby for a premium round. And don't forget you get to keep that case and load it up later. Just something to think about. Now for some comparisons, because I have 
uh, I put together a chart, uh, you guys kind of know me for this, that uh, I'm gonna go crazy with data. We're gonna see how this actually slots in in the industry. We have a lot of great options to choose from, beginning with, of course, 223. And we're gonna see how some of these others stack up. We're actually gonna start on the high side. So I've put a trajectory chart right here on the screen so you can see it. Uh, the one at the very top is going to be 6.5 millimeter Creedmoor. So this is not one that can fit in an AR-15, but I wanted to show you how little difference there is between 6.5 Creedmoor and the trajectory of some of these new rounds like 6mm arc. So here is my own 140 grain ELDM load through a 24 inch barrel. And you can see that this one actually, you know, of course it's a very flat shooter out to the thousand yards that I have set up on this chart. And 224 Valkyrie actually doesn't come in much below that. We have six millimeter arc coming in right under 224 Valkyrie. But remember, and we're gonna take a look at this on a chart here in a second, that some of these, even though they have a flatter trajectory, are not delivering as much energy as others. 6.5 Creedmoor, in this case, is the total winner. It not only has the flattest trajectory, but it's going to have a, a very hard hit when it lands at any of these distances. It's gonna whoop up on all of these. Uh, 224 Valkyrie, though, as we step down, that one's gonna have that really flat trajectory, but it's only a 90 grain bullet at max, and it's not going to hit quite as hard. 6mm arc almost has the same trajectory with that 108 grain bullet, but again it is that 108 grain bullet, so it is going to have more energy on target. 6.5 Grendel is trailing just a little bit in trajectory. It's not going to be quite as fast and it's not going to have quite the same efficiency through the air as 6mm arc, but you can see that it does provide a little bit more energy, kind of similar to the difference between 6mm arc and 224 Valkyrie. Now we step down to 223 Remington, so we're getting quite a bit more drop here, even with a good efficient 75 grain bullet, and its energy is significantly less. So this is the big reason why people might want to be stepping up to 6mm arc. Better trajectory, better chance of getting a hit, and it's going to hit a whole lot harder. Jumping down a whole bunch, we have 7.62 by 39. This is one that is gonna go subsonic pretty quickly, and we'll take a look at the uh, specifics here. And then finally, we have 300 Black, which uh, with its 135 grain SST bullet is, yeah, it just doesn't really compare at all. Let's take a look at some of the specifics on each of these charts, just so you can kind of get an idea of especially how windage might affect some of these. At a thousand yards and in a 10 mile an hour crosswind, we're looking at 66 inches of wind drift for 6.5 Creedmoor, and that is gonna be the benchmark that we're gonna compare everything else to. This is also going to be the benchmark for energy, so we are seeing it only drop below 1,000 foot-pounds of energy as we get out past 725 yards. 224 Valkyrie is still pretty flat shooting, but take a look at how much more wind we're dealing with. We're looking at about 81 inches of wind drift versus the 66 that we had before. That's pretty significant. And then the energy you'll see here, we get down below 1,000 foot-pounds of energy just as we pass the 300 yard mark. 6 millimeter arc may have had a trajectory that's very similar to 224 Valkyrie, but we do actually step up in wind. So we are dealing with 86 0.6 inches of wind in a 10 mile an hour crosswind and then uh, but our energy does stay up just a little bit further so it gets out between 400 and 425 yards so we're getting an extra 100 yards of energy out of this whatever you would get out of 224 valkyrie add another 100 yards and that's what you're going to get with six millimeter arc 6.5 Grendel with that 123 grain SST. I know that we can kind of vary all over the place with bullet shapes and weights and all that, but this one did seem pretty darn efficient. This one steps up another four inches or so on wind at a thousand yards. And this uh, does have its energy just slightly longer than it does uh, the six millimeter arc. So this one's gonna drop below a thousand foot pounds of energy somewhere between 425 and 450 yards. It's a little bit longer than six millimeter arc, but uh, not a huge difference. 223, as you can see on this chart with my 75 grain bullet, and this one is not exactly a fair comparison. This is real world testing with one of my own loads that, uh, that I've put together. You can probably get some that are faster, but this is you know some real world data right here. But this one does go subsonic before 1000 yards, so you're looking at somewhere between 825 and 850. 
uh, when we hit the sound barrier. And its windage is a whopping 142 inches in a 10 mile an hour crosswind. And you can see that its energy is just barely above 1,000 foot-pounds of energy, uh, even just at the start. So once you get past 50 yards, you're out of it. Uh, this one does not really compare at all. 7.62 by 39 hangs on to its energy, but its windage is even worse. So at 1,000 yards, of course this is not a 1,000 yard cartridge, this one is just silly to compare, but you're looking at almost 200 inches of wind drift, and it's really gonna be like that for the whole of its trajectory. This one is not one that's very efficient. It's not really designed to cut the wind very well. It's designed for close range work. And it does that. You can see that its energy at close distance is considerably up from 223, uh, only dropping below 1,000 at about 150 yards. But uh, yeah, this one is just not nearly as efficient as any of the others that we've seen. Trailing the pack by a long distance in every single category is 300 Blackout with a 135 grain FTX bullet. This is a cartridge that I've never really been all that interested in. I've enjoyed shooting it. It's a really neat little kind of close range one, especially if you're shooting the subsonics. I do enjoy that. And I do think this would be an interesting one for protecting a business from rioters uh, because of its kind of, you know, limited range. Uh, kind of a little bit of a heavy punch up front, but as you can see, it's not a whole lot. We get below a thousand foot-pounds of energy right there between 50 and 75 yards, and we hit the sound barrier somewhere between 325 and 350, and the, uh, the windage is just insane. So no, this is not one that's going to compare at all, but uh, I just wanted you to kind of see what some of the common comparisons are going to be. Overall, I think 6mm arc is going to be what a lot of us have been looking for, and I know me in particular. I've been bumping up against the limitations of 223 Remington for a long time, even out varminting. You know, it has its place, it has its strengths, it's definitely cheap to shoot and pretty easy to load up, but it does have some annoyances. You know, it doesn't provide all that much energy, its trajectory isn't all that awesome, and, you know, when it comes to bucking the wind, it especially is not all that great. And 6mm arc is going to fix all of those problems, allowing me to get a little further distance, uh, to be able to very precisely get on target without much wind drift. It, I think it's just going to fix a whole lot of what ails the AR-15 platform. Like I've mentioned in a bunch of other videos before, 243 Winchester is still my favorite cartridge of all time, and I think its little brother is gonna end up being just about as endearing. We'll see in testing, so make sure that you like, share, subscribe, and especially hit that notification bell down there so you see when new videos come out. YouTube doesn't like to get this content out there, so we gotta do what we can in order to figure out when these videos come out. We're gonna have a bunch of really cool series going on. Thank you to everybody that has made these videos possible. Thank you to CMMG for sending that rifle for me to check out here in the near future. And uh, thank you to patrons of the Destructive Arts that pay for a lot of the ammo that I use here on the channel. They bought the ballistics gel that we're gonna be using to test this cartridge. Uh, we're gonna get into some wacky stuff and those guys are footing the bill. So thank you guys. Thank you Sportsman's Guide and Stan and Mary at the 338 Lapua Magnum level at Patreon. And uh, Joseph Davis, Peter and Mr. No Name at the 300 Win Mag level. And thanks to everybody else that is chipping in a buck or two a month. If you wanna become one of those, I'll put a link to Patreon on here. See you guys around. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content, go ahead and subscribe. There's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So, you can become a patron of the Destructive Arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high-quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage.